rules and regulations, such as, for example, Bangsamoro Election Code, Bangsamoro Local Government Code, and, uh, of course, uh, uh, other necessary uh, uh, laws that has to, has to be passed in the Bangsamoro. But anyway, uh, I have uh, uh, underscored to you the uh, uh, delineation of uh, powers. And uh, anyway, for things that uh, are uh, within the bounds of that concurrent power, there will be uh, an intergovernmental body that will be uh, uh, established by the uh, uh, central government and the Bangsamoro government that will look into area, gray areas that uh, are not yet covered uh, in the uh, uh, reserved and the exclusive uh, uh, powers. Uh, Alan Blackley, uh, Managing Director, Quest Exploration Drilling. Uh, gentlemen, uh, those who know me always uh, know that I always have a few words to say. But uh, I have a question and perhaps a statement as well. But presumably in the autonomous region, those companies that work here in the Philippines or registered companies in the Philippines will be re required to re-register in, in the region. Would that be correct? I think for the, uh, uh, if we are going to really have uh, that uh, information, since uh, it, it will be the, uh, the basic law that will address that problem. And uh, if the basic law cannot address that, uh, then it will be the Bangsamoro Parliament uh, that can address that. Uh, so I would say it's still very early to, uh, to really uh, assume whether that is really the, uh, uh, whether that is true or not. Thank you for that answer. Uh, and, and my very short statement is, uh, when you're um, considering your development proposals and uh, you're looking at mining in particular, I would urge you to consider two aspects of mining. And one is exploration. Uh, as opposed to mining. Now, exploration in its own right is an industry, uh, and it can provide almost immediate benefits to your local communities, employment, uh, training, et cetera, and also, obviously, compensation, et cetera. It's an almost an immediate thing that can happen, uh, and exploration does not lead to mining. Um, I've been in this game for a long time, and uh, in my experience, we've worked on hundreds of projects and I can count on three fingers the projects that have turned into mines in various countries around the Asia-Pacific region. So what I would say to you is what you need to consider is that try and uh, differentiate exploration from mining. Exploration may lead to mining, but it may not. But at the same time, it's an industry in its own right and it can provide significant benefits to the region, and I would urge you to consider that. Thank you. You know, uh, number one is that... Uh, we have to uh, uh, emphasize that the, the Bangsamoro government is not an independent one. It is, uh, it is just an autonomous uh, government. And uh, some uh, uh, agencies of the government may, may also have its uh, own uh, uh, representation of the, in the Bangsamoro. For example, the government has its own uh, uh, commission on audit. But in the Bangsamoro, we will also uh, have our, our Bangsamoro audit uh, uh, office. Uh, uh, in which case, the uh, commission on audit of the uh, national government uh, can still do its uh, standard procedures of auditing uh, uh, government agencies, including the Bangsamoro itself, but the Bangsamoro also, government can also uh, audit uh, its uh, different uh, instrumentalities in order to make sure that uh, uh, really everything is doing good. So with regards to SEC, it, it might happen that uh, uh, an SEC type uh, of uh, office uh, will be established in the Bangsamoro or, or uh, uh, just, an, uh, just an extension of the uh, uh, SEC in, uh, f from the central government. So uh, I, I do not foresee the, uh, the possibility that uh, uh, things will uh, become more cumbersome for uh,
companies just because uh, we have the Bank Samoro and there will be another rounds of uh, uh, registration once the Bank, Bank Samoro is in place. But our team is currently, as we speak, in South Upi conducting geohazards assessment. While they can also do exploration, they're not yet doing that. Uh, currently, we, have, we are tasked to do 76 municipalities in Lanao Sur and Maguindanao. So I think addressing or allowing us to do the geohazards mapping and assessment within the region will create precisely this, an investor-friendly environment within the region. So my question again, please, is how else is the agency uh, creating that environment in order to promote inclusive growth within the region. Uh, Dr. Sap can uh, expound on this uh, later. Maybe just to respond uh, oh, 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 on the concern of what we can do in the Bangsamoro Development Plan. Uh, one of our identified uh, uh, strategy in the short term phase or say transition phase is on not necessarily exploration because considering that our capacity is not yet that uh, excellent. We, we, uh, we still have to start from scratch in terms of capacity. That's why we, we will need more uh, uh, capacity building intervention very soon. What I'm trying to say is that what we can do in the transition phase is uh, more on ass assessment, scoping, or even prospecting. Because we want, though there are reports that there are uh, some deposits of minerals within Bangsamoro, but we want to know how, how the magnitude or the, the volume, so that we can estimate that and uh, whether it is of commercial value, uh, because that has something to do with uh, the fiscal autonomy that the Bangsamor government would like to establish. And that, so that if it is of commercial value, then we can, we can use that uh, as our sources of our revenue. So, Dr. Sap, maybe can add on this. Uh, I, I, I would like to uh, respond to. Uh, uh, what the lady has uh, uh, posed to us. You know, we are very thankful that in the Bank Zamoro, actually, we're not starting from scratch because we're just going to uh, uh, take, uh, take on what uh, uh, the uh, autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao uh, have done and uh, also what uh, have been done by other uh, national line agencies uh, of the government. Uh, what we are doing now is uh, since uh, the, the Bank Samoro Development uh, Agency has, has really not yet uh, uh, started with some hard uh, uh, projects or programs relative to uh, environment, we are now uh, uh, partnering with uh, uh, in, uh, international partners such as uh, the UNDP and other. In addition to that, uh, our partnership with World Bank through uh, MTF, we, we promote the uh, environmental safeguard. Uh, impact our uh, focal person on the uh, that, that uh, concern have been gone civil training in in Manila uh, for uh, for that uh, purposes. So we look at that area for for uh, capacity building of our agency. The uh, plan. One of our is pra uh, what's this we call it a uh, quick impact activity in the transition phase in the. Bangsamoro Development Plan is this geohazard mapping, and we're very glad to hear that uh, your office is already conducting that. Then maybe we can expand on that as we go on uh, come the Bangsamoro Transition Authority. And I believe uh, in the Bangsamoro Basic Law, uh, there is this section 4 under uh, Article 13, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, the Bangsamoro, uh, the government will uh, form this Bangsamoro. Sustainable Development Board, and then I think that body can work with with, uh, with that team to forego or to to continue this uh, geohazard mapping, and among others. Uh, just to uh, augment on what Brother Wendell and Ustad Shoaib Muhammad Yaqub was saying, uh, in the Bangsamoro Development Plan, the sources of growth 
are essentially going to be agriculture, including fisheries and forestry. And I think you mentioned mining as well. Now, just to give you a sense of the potential there is, for example, in agriculture, by way of an analogy to mining, uh, we did a study recently, and my colleague and friend from former World Bank, Tom Allen, is here, and we were researching on agribusiness potential in Bangsamoro. And we found that the value addition in agriculture and agribusiness is only about three to four billion pesos. But the productivity is so low in agriculture that if you just bring the productivity in agriculture to the national average, that value addition can go up to 11 to 12 billion pesos. A threefold increase just by increasing the productivity of agriculture. So you can imagine and you've seen the kind of resources that are available in minerals and energy that Doc Saf has shown in his presentation. Of course, that has to be now fully proven. Some of that is probable and possible, but it has to be proven through exploration and that's where the greatest risks lie, as someone has mentioned, and that has to be factored in. And therefore, that comes, brings me to my second point, again as an analogy. In the agribusiness sector, we recommended, and it was well received by the MILF and the BDA, that we have a two-track approach. The first track is really where we have to look at some quick wins, easier investments, early dividends of peace that are desperately required now since the peace process is going so well and the Bangsamoto basic law is with the Congress and the Senate to be approved, God willing, in the near future. And there are expectations. So the first track should look at what can we do so tailor fit some investments now in the short term, the phases that Dr. Saf and Ustad Yaqub referred to in terms of the BDP. So the first phase or the short term, 2014, 2016, should be looking at those of you who are ready to come in now, what special provisions you may require to tailor fit some of your investments, give you the policy incentives, the regulatory incentives to bring you in fast and to bring in those investments that you're looking at. Perhaps even looking at exploration and seeing special incentives for exploration in certain areas where there is good bit of interest. The second track would be then looking at the longer term, or let's say medium term, policy initiatives, policy instruments, regulatory legal instruments that may be required, which will take time to formulate anyway. Uh, so again, I think uh, there are two tracks, and I'm sure BDA and the MILF will be receptive in moving in these two tracks, even looking at mining, uh, for instance, as well as focus group discussions to reach on some concluding suggestions or to propose to the BDA and recommend to the BDA what the private sector needs, what kinds of incentives they need, and that's what resulted in our research. I think such focus group discussions can also be entertained in the mining industry yes. with the BDA and with interested partners as well as some uh, partners and stakeholders from the communities and even the existing government because they are in charge at the moment. Yeah. May, may I ask then, when would the BDA be ready for such a workshop with the mining industry? I think we're ready to have that conversation, aren't we? Yes. Uh, but not to rush you, but I, I understand that you have to work within a framework, a sort of time frame, but an indication. Are we going to see that the first quarter of next year? Are we going to wait for the law to be passed? Are we? Because you've already had some workshops. Yes. Yeah? Yes, yes. In fact, uh, we are uh, having a series of workshops on uh, the private investment in the Bank Samoro that is uh, being uh, conducted by the Foundations for Economic Freedom. Uh, in, in collaboration uh, with uh, the BDA and, of course, the PCID. So uh, uh, we are, are from this series of workshops, uh, we are, are getting very important uh, inputs that uh, 
uh, are factored in in the making of the uh, Bangsamoro Development Plan. And come January, we will be uh, having, I, I think it, it will be the last workshop which is on fiscal management. And uh, probably after, after that, then uh, we might be able to uh, uh, schedule another uh, workshop uh, with the mining sector if, uh, if uh, some uh, of our friends will be interested to, uh, to be with us. Because after the, this last workshop, then uh, we will be able to uh, uh, consolidate the uh, results of the series of workshops that we've been doing with the EFEF. Uh, my question is, uh, I, I studied, I was one of the beneficiaries of the benevolence of, of Islam. I studied in uh, Aga Khan High School, which was founded by the Aga Khan. And when you mentioned challenges, you didn't mention one challenge, which is the, 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 the social aspect that people are not really aware of the, you know, the good things that Islam is doing. And this is one of the things that is very hard for somebody like myself, who's on the sell side of investments into the Philippines, is that because there's this picture that has been painted, or there's this uh, information, misinformation, that makes people not want to venture there. You know, you know when I saw some of the pictures here of Lanao and, and the region, I, I, I want to go there immediately. So my, my question is, what are some of the things that you would do to address uh, this kind of challenge, which I think is how people view the, the Bangsamoro region or how people view the social aspects of the life and things like that to make people want to be there. In the proposed Bangsamoro core territories, it's such that uh, after the signing of the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro, uh, the peace and order problem uh, has improved uh, dramatically and uh, people are, have very high expectations uh, uh, on the uh, uh, bright things that, uh, that will come into our, our area. And of course, this is also uh, uh, creating uh, heavy pressure on us on how to manage this uh, uh, very high uh, uh, expectations, and this is the reason why we have. We know that uh, uh, we will not be able to address problems and challenges overnight. But we are now partnering with, uh, firstly, with the with the national government, with the uh, uh, international uh, development partners, in order to. Uh, confront uh, these challenges. We are very uh, confident that once the, once the Bank Samoro uh, is there, gradually this uh, uh, issue about uh, security problems in Mindanao will, will uh, be improved and we hope that one day we will be able to convince the U.S. Embassy to uh, no longer be issuing uh, security advisory to, to their, to their uh, uh, citizens. So uh, we, we are very hopeful about this uh, uh, situation. So uh, in as much as uh, the private sector is recognized by us as one of the uh, very uh, significant actors in, in the growth and development of our area, uh, we really are uh, uh, pursuing uh, that uh, we will have a very good partnership with you ladies and gentlemen, and we hope that this will happen in the near future. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Chairman Dr. Dipatuan. I am Ernesto Cebua, representing Alpha Jure Mining Development Corporation, which has uh, 5,022 hectares gold copper claim in Taguluan, Lanao del Sur. Uh, there are seven MPSA in Tawi-Tawi, and two MPSA copper gold in uh, Maguindanao, and one in Lanao del Sur, has been issued last uh, 2008 and 2007, respectively. Uh, my question is, with the incoming Bangsamoro government, uh, what will happen with the MPC that has been issued already? Or we, that, we're, we're just curious about that. And also, I just want to address uh, our honorable guest that you are welcome to our place, and we're looking for a partner for our gold and copper area. 
and we can assure you that our place is very safe for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for mentioning that. In fact, uh, I'm just uh, hearing about this uh, uh, MPSA uh, in, in, in my uh, own uh, neighbor, because Taguluan is uh, very near to my, uh, to my place. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think that uh, a situation will happen wherein once the Bangsamoro is there, there will be a vacuum of governance and everything that has been there will be cancelled. Uh, the, the Bangsamoro also, of course, will honor uh, the commitments uh, uh, that uh, uh, has been in place there for quite some time. But uh, we should have some conversation on, on how to maybe uh, just like a vow of marriage we're in, we will renew our vow in the uh, new context. And I come from a perspective of really a foreigner who arrived here 30 years ago and how things were in Mindanao as a whole and of course in Marawi and other parts of Muslim Mindanao. Uh, it has been a dramatic change. And more recently, as was mentioned earlier, uh, enormous hope and expectations of peace but still today, when I mention to people that I work only on Mindanao, after having toured the rest of Asia for 25 years, uh, whilst I was at the Asian Development Bank, people immediately are concerned and they ask, is it safe? How do you travel? Where do you go? I can assure you, it's by and large safe. Yes, there are pockets of areas and conflicted zones and so on. But by and large, Mindanao is safe. And uh, I spend a lot of time in northern Mindanao, by the way, in Bukidnon, where our little farm is. And that place is just as safe as Muslim Mindanao, or just as unsafe as Muslim Mindanao. I mean, most of Mindanao is safe today, and you can travel there. So that's the first thing I would like to say, coming from an outsider's perspective, but is a Filipino now, and I'm settled here. Um, the other thing I would like to say is that, this may sound a little too dramatic, but Islam in the Philippines has basically been benign for many years. 